Hey girlfriends, I'm Bianca Renee and you're watching Bianca Renee today. And today we're gonna be talking about high porosity hair. And I'm gonna give you tips from people that actually have high porosity hair. So this is like the final video of my little series talking about different hair types. I have a previous video about type four hair, a video about thick hair, and today is about high porosity hair. All different hair types than I have. So my videos are often catered towards low porosity hair, medium porosity hair, cause that's what I have. But high porosity ladies and gentlemen, it's all about you today. So just like my previous videos, I have all of my notes right here and I wrote down all of your responses that you guys sent me on Instagram. If you're not following me, I don't know what you're waiting for. Go ahead and do that right now while we're waiting. <laughs> okay, like seriously, like, do it right now. Okay, now that we're besties on Instagram, let me tell you all the things you need to know if you have high porosity hair. First of all, what is high porosity hair? I do have two videos all about low and high porosity, so I do suggest you go watch those videos. I'll link them below and above. But low porosity hair means your hair cuticles are closed shut, so it's kind of hard to get that moisture in there. Versus having high porosity hair, your cuticles are wide open, which makes the moisture get in there pretty easily. But because they're open, that moisture also leaves easily as well. So you have to style and add products a little bit differently to really benefit from all the products that you're putting in there. First thing that you guys recommended to me is that you use the LCO method. That stands for leave-in cream then oil. Leave-in will give you moisture. A cream styler will give you moisture. And then an oil at the end, your final step, will lock in and seal that moisture in and kind of like closes the door on those high porosity cuticles of yours. So that makes sense. So if you're applying your stylers, do a leave-in conditioner, then a cream styler, and then seal it with an oil. Love that tip. Next one is that you pre-poo with oils. Once again, your hair likes that moisture, it likes that slip. So you can pre-poo with like a coconut oil before getting in the shower and adding your shampoo and conditioner. Or like I just did in my last video for thick hair, you could pre-poo with an oil or you do your conditioner first before your shampoo. Many of you do protein treatments twice a month. Protein is gonna be anybody with high porosity hair's best friend because protein is used to restore your hair. Our hair is made up of protein. So if you have low porosity hair, you don't have to use protein as much as somebody with high porosity. So I do like the tip that you do protein treatments twice a month where someone like me with medium or low porosity would only have to use it like once a month. Protein is often used to restore damaged hair. So if your hair is bleached or you straightened it too much, you're gonna need a lot of protein to help restore your hair. And high porosity can have a lot of similarities to damaged hair, even if it's not damaged. Only because if you have low porosity hair and then you started to dye your hair and you straightened it all the time, you actually started to raise those cuticles, making it now changing from low porosity to high porosity hair. If this sounds a little confusing for you, make sure you go back and watch my other videos so you understand high and low porosity. Many of you said that you do not use heat when deep conditioning. Now I actually do because I have low or medium porosity hair. So I wear a heat cap. So I put in the microwave and it adds a bunch of steam or some people do steam and that will kind of open up my closed cuticles so that moisture can get in there. But if you have high porosity, your doors are already wide open. So you don't need that heat to like open them up more because they're already open. So that's a great tip that you don't need to add any extra type of like heat or heat cap when deep conditioning because it's just not necessary. Many of you use multiple products. I can see that because you need that moisture. You're probably gonna use a leave-in and a cream and then maybe a gel or whatever your styler is, but definitely a leave-in and a cream to get that double moisture. You rinse with cold water. Another great tip, cold water is said to close your cuticles. So if you're taking a shower, instead of rinsing all your conditioner out with hot water, use cold water and that'll kind of help keep that moisture in your hair from the conditioner. Air dry. Okay, this is also a great tip. Many of you air dry because your hair sucks up that moisture so fast that you don't need any help from a diffuser to dry your hair because it's it dries so quickly. <laughs> so I can definitely see you just having air dry and being good to go in like, I don't know, 
15 minutes, 20 minutes, how fast did your hair dry? Let me know down below. You add more water more frequently and you apply your products on soaking wet hair. Once again, you like that moisture. You need all the moisture you can get and moisture comes from water. So while you're applying your stylers, go ahead and spray some more water on there and then apply more on top of that. Water, moisture is your best friend and protein. They might fight over you. You apply your products in sections, eight sections, six sections, 20 plus sections. Am I the only one that doesn't do sections? This is also important for thick hair and high porosity hair because if you do take a section, you really want to get all that moisture in there. So if you just get a bunch of product and just smooth it on, not every single hair is really getting the attention that it needs from that product. So if you do smaller sections, you're now allowing a lot of product to get into a small piece and then you apply more product and more and more and more. So then your hair is completely saturated. So yes, I will agree. If your hair is thick or you have high porosity hair, do sections. Thank God I don't because I'm too lazy for sections. You wash your hair more frequently because the moisture is gone. I can see that. I wash my hair about once a week, but if your hair is just too dry and just refreshing is not cutting it, I can see you washing it more often and deep conditioning more often so that you can retain that moisture. Great tip. You like to use heavy creams, rich leave-ins, and butters. All things that are not friends with low porosity hair because if you have low porosity hair, your cuticles are sealed, so you're just adding all this stuff on top of it and the doors are closed, so you're weighing it down. So my hair will be super flat and weighed down if I personally use heavy creams, butters, or a lot of oil. But if you have high porosity hair, it's nice to just kind of stuff them, stuff the door with moisture and just let them like just hang out and slowly absorb. Heavy creams, rich leave-ins, butters, oils will all work well. You have to use a cream before gel. I will agree with this one. I am a rare case where I am someone that just likes to use a gel all on its own. But if your hair is lacking that moisture, you definitely have to apply a leave-in before the gel. And that'll also make your hair not as crunchy and not as dried out. And it'll make your wash days last longer throughout the week. So those are all great tips from you guys. Now let's talk about the products. These are the top products that you guys recommended to me to share with people that have high porosity hair. I got a lot of people saying sultanicals. I don't know why I said sultanics in my last video. Sorry about that. It's definitely called sultanicals. I haven't tried them yet. Maybe because I see so many like rich creams and butters and it like kind of scared me and they're kind of hard to find, but I will try them. A lot of people said Shea Moisture, specifically the Jamaican Black Castor Oil line, the Manuka Honey line, which is their protein line, so I can see that being great. And then some of you even said their high porosity line, but I don't think that's a thing anymore. Like I think the high porosity and the low porosity lines got discontinued. Those were great. I personally loved the low porosity line. I thought it was just really easy and convenient to just be like, oh, that's my hair type. And you can just grab those products without having to guess if they work for your hair. But I really don't think they make them anymore. I may be wrong but I haven't seen them in a long time. The Curl Smith Strength Line, yes, definitely. The entire Curl Smith Strength Line, which is the purple ones, those are filled with protein. So you can get your protein not just from a protein treatment, you also can get it from your creams, your gels, your mousse. They have a little bit of protein in all of their products and all the ones that have the little purple stripes. So, so definitely check out the Curl Smith Strength line. Your hair is going to love it. Twist. Yes, I recently reviewed Twist as well. Twist is a new affordable product line. It's like the sister brand to Weed Ad. It's like their new company and they have a whole high moisture line. And they really specify each product by the amount of moisture that it has. So that's going to be a great one for high porosity hair and low, but just read which one is going to be best for you. They have a lot of products in that line. Or you can just watch my video to narrow it down. Olaplex, some of you recommended Olaplex, which is a bonding treatment. So that's really good if you have damaged hair. So I can see that also working for high porosity hair. Some of you said Tali, Wajid, Apple, and Aloe. That has been a very specific line that you guys have recommended a lot, especially for thick and high porosity hair. I need to try that one. And last but not least, Myel Organics. There you go, everybody. I think that is just about everything you need to know about having high porosity hair and how to make your routine actually work for you. I always say, don't just do what I do. I mean, try it, but if it doesn't work, feel free to switch it up. This year I am doing the switch it up challenge, so I love to see how you guys are trying new things, experimenting so you can figure out what will work best for you and your 
curls. But if you have any other recommendations on high porosity hair tips or products or things that you do to make your life easier with the high porosity hair, please leave us a comment down below so you can help another curl friend reading them. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe. I post new videos every week just trying to help you and your curls so you can love them and make your wash day routines a little bit easier. Make sure you are also following me on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter at Ms. Bianca Renee. That way you can see me every day. I hope to see you guys next time. Thanks for watching Bianca Renee today.